Thank you very much for attending Washokudo, the World Japanese Cuisine Show Symposium. Thank you very much for waiting. Now inviting Mr. Shinichiro Takagi, a master and chef of Japanese classic restaurant Zenia. We are going to start a program titled The Basis of Washoku, the Culture and the Cooking Technique Gathered in One Japanese Bowl. Please use a simultaneous translation receiver, and uh, this is channel 6 for English, and we have channels for Japanese and French as well. When the program is over, please leave the device on the chair. Now, thank you again for waiting. Please welcome the speaker with a big applause. Mr. Takagi, please. Good afternoon. The basic or basis of Washoku is a title that I have received. This is very big. And the subtitle is a culture and the cooking technique gathered in one Japanese bowl. Let me focus on one or bowl. One which is closest to our, our life is a bowl to use when you eat miso soup and also rice. Also, the Chinese character used are somewhat different, but the utensils are the same. Back in uh, the, the era of the Shou Sou Yin uh, in early Japan, uh, the precious stone was also used uh, to serve as one and things something so familiar to us uh, is actually it has been used in Japan for so long since ancient time and they were also created as a, a piece of art today uh, I'm going to show you uh, some uh, the cases of uh, the cuisine, but uh, let me talk more about one. Today, uh, I would like to focus on Wajima, one of the uh, laka ware mainly produced in Ishikawa, my hometown. This is only a block of wood, and this is the starting point of one. Oh. A block of wood is carved into the shape of one. Perhaps you cannot imagine how it would turn out to be a bowl or one. At this stage, I think you start to see the final shape. Uh, this is a process named alabiki, the crude carving. Please pay attention to the fact of how uh, the, the rings of the, uh, the wood is running. And uh, later you can see how it will be finished. And if it's black, you will not see the direction of grains of the wood. But the Japanese craftsmen paid attention to how the core should be made beautifully and solidly when it's to be used as one, although it may be visible to the users. This is after arabiki. Uh, this is further carving using a lathe, and the, it's turned on a lathe in order to finalize the shape. I think uh, the, the, the lathe is somewhat different. Was it chisels? The shape of this one may be uh, somewhat different from a usual one. I don't know which type of chisel does what, but the craftsman says that the tip of the chisel is quite important. And uh, I prepare how the shape of the tip should be in order to satisfy the particular need of my work of craftsmanship. The 
uh, kanna or lace is the name given to the uh, chizo because uh, the the bow is on a turn and it's turning. Now you see is the core being finished. You can see is the line of the uh, the wooden structure very clearly. In a Japanese cuisine, when one is used or unpainted uh, utensil is used. Uh, the front uh, of, of, of one uh, is perpendicular uh, to uh, the lines uh, moving uh, from the left to right to the guest. Although, in many cases, how the wooden structure run are invisible to the users because of the cutter and the others placed on the utensils. Uh, this is the Kiji Gatame process. Kiji means uh, is a core, a wooden material. And after the carving, the surface of the core is still uneven. So it must be made to a very flat surface. Uh, the crude uh, urushi was applied only once. And this is the basis of the following process. And the, the urushi or laka is applied again and again after this process. And the next is a process named kokuso. Uh, the, the laka is applied to the core base in order to fill any gaps in the core. And it's done in a very delicate manner. So still, we are in the, uh, the, the priming process or preparing pr process for applying lacquers. You see something white, uh, this sticky thing. Uh, this is rice glue. Rice glue is mixed with crude lacquer. Then you get this kind of beige color. Then the next process is named Nu no Kise pasting cloth, and uh, this uh, liquid is quite important for, for Nu no Kise pasting cloth. On the rim, the cotton cloth is pasted or applied, and the beige uh, lacquer mixed with uh, the rice glue. Uh, is immersed into the cloth, which is on the uh, one bow. The purpose of the cloth pasting is to make this part of the bow, bow very uh, rigid and strong. And the, otherwise, these places, rim is very uh, fragile. And in order to prevent the cracking from the rim and from the bottom, uh, pasting of the cloth is conducted. The cloth immersed with uh, laka is the process you see right now. The cloth soaked in laka, and after the soaking, uh, the cloth is applied on the surface in order to end this process. So, on to the core. The a piece of cloth is applied, meaning that the surface of the core is no longer smooth because of the presence of a piece of cloth. Both inside and outside uh, of the one, uh, the laka will be repeatedly applied and this uh, the utensil or the tool is used to get rid of the unevenness on the surface and the tool is also prepared by each craftsman. Can you see the difference between these tools? This one is for uh, the working inside and this one, this tool is for working on the outside. And this is it's a process named Soumi. 
with the, the cross, uh, there is uh, some uh, gap between the cross and the wood. In order to get rid of the gap or step, something is done, meaning more lacquer is applied to increase the thickness. But lacquer alone uh, means that the, the bow would have to depend on the strength of the lacquer layer alone in order to increase uh, the strength. Lacquer applied uh, at this stage has uh, the, the wooden powder of keyaki. Uh, keyaki is a cobra. Uh, keyaki was widely used in Ishikawa area, and uh, keyaki is a cobra is uh, uh, the, the wood of the prefecture of Ishikawa, tree of the prefecture. So in order to make uh, the outer surface flat, uh, the the lacquer with the keyaki powder is applied on the outside, around the base or the button to make it flat. Uh, the, the lacquer with the keyaki zakopa powder is applied. Now, the, the shape is completely flat and the, the further application of Urushi Laka starts. Uh, Wajima Laka wear is made up of seven or nine layers of finish Laka or the coating of the final Laka layer is made up of seven or nine layers. This is Ippen Jizuke process. This is the first application of G. From now on, instead of having the keyaki zeko powder in laka, laka from now on is mixed with, not with uh, the keyaki wooden powder, but with the diatomite supplied from Suzu area in the Noto Peninsula. Diatomite used to be diatoms and it turned into uh, the soil and the powdered and, and it's mixed with the laka. Soil, including laka, means that the application of the particular laka would increase the strength of that layer. It's done once and then the layer is polished. As for the Japanese term of togu, uh, this is the same as uh, the, the sharpening the knife when you use the term togu, although it also means polishing. So although the craftsman is uh, polishing the lacquered layer, it's possible by doing it. Uh, the, this uh, polishing process may be actually sharpening the layer by changing the uh, crystal structures. This is a second application of the same type of lacquer, and then the next sharpening or polishing. Next is mesuli. Again, diatomite is applied, but here the grain size of diatomite is different. In the earlier process, uh, the coarse uh, powders of diatomite were used, but now, or later on, the finer grain are being used. Application, and then another polishing or sharpening process. Then, next is Nakanuri intermediate coating. At this level, I think you start to see the type of laka wear that you are familiar with, but this one is not finished at all. This is still in the intermediate coating process. You have to go through another application and a polishing, and all of these are done manually. These are handwork by craftsmen, and this is uh, the polishing of nakanuri, intermediate coating. By now, you think that, that this one is ready for sale, but still it's not perfect yet. 
Next process is uanori, finish coating. The bar is uh, almost uh, ready. Uh, the concentration of the laka uh, is made toward, is changed toward 100% laka without any mixture. So now the coating is finished. And the next is the process to give a design like makie or chinkin decoration process. And uh, although the uh, upper coat was perfectly applied, in the next process, uh, the scraping is done to make grooves to accept gold powders or to accept the colored laka. So this is the tool to scrape or to make grooves on the surface. They are called the nomi chisels. Here, at this stage, this really looks like the lacquerware you know very well, uh, applied with lacquer, and then a gold powder is sprinkled on, and chinking uh, is also done. Uh, a craftsman is using a very thin brush, painting red, and the hair of this brush uh, is from very interesting material. The hair of a mice. Uh, furthermore, um, uh, the hair from the neck to the belly of mice who used to live uh, in a ship uh, sailing uh, the fresh water. Uh, I really want to ask why this particular hair is used, but it seems that uh, such uh, master craftsmen like to use such mice, and it seems that such mice uh, came from Lake Biwa area. Uh, and uh, to use such a very fine and thin uh, brush requires a long years of experience, and only the really top craftsman is allowed to use such a thin brush, only one or two craftspersons per studio. Now, this series of very complicated, meticulous work, uh, this one, about a little over 10 years ago, I asked the craftsman in Wajima area to make this uh, ball for me, especially. And Oda Yurakusai, uh, the younger brother of Oda Nobunaga, um, donated such one um, to make it in temple in Kamakura, and this is the replica of uh, such a one made back in the 16th century. And it took the craftsman three years to perfect this ball before they are actually delivered to me. Of course, the craftsman working, working very hard throughout the three years, but from uh, the rough a uh, block of wood, starting from that to the completion of the one, it took them three years. And actually, unfortunately, after three years, you forget what you ordered to the studios. And it's very expensive. And I had to make a very bold decision to order a uh, craftsman to make such expensive uh, uh, one. But after three years, I almost forgot what I ordered. Uh, and uh, the craftsman telephoned me that now the one was ready. And when they were to deliver, actually they have to deliver that with a bill. And I was once again really surprised that it was so expensive. I forgot that in the three years' time. For Wajima area, Wajima Nuri lacquerware and the Kaga lacquerware uh, with makie are real good ones, last really long. Often the case, this is almost a myth. Uh, lacquerware is uh, weak against the uh, water. It's really a myth because uh, we use it uh, to contain soup. But when after you wash it uh, with water, you have to make sure that uh, water is uh, completely wiped off. This is about 200 years old. 200 years old. No repair at all. It was made 200 years ago. 
this is Kagamaki A, one from Kanazawa area today. And I wouldn't say every day, but this is one of the ones we use in our restaurant every day. Uh, and no one really uh, guessed that this was 200 years old. And uh, sometimes I have difficulty determining whether I should mention that it was 200 years old. Uh, sometimes I might sound rather uh, boasting, uh, but uh, for a real creative uh, washoku, uh, I sometimes decide to use such a very old one, or sometimes I am allowed to use a very new one. And thus, one of the joys as a Japanese chef is to be able to combine different uh, ones uh, to serve various dishes. And also, guests are able to appreciate what the wonderful one they are now holding in their hands they, when they are at the dinner table. So, indeed, one... Uh, the kind of balaka where you see in front is an art, a piece of art and a craft. Mm. History and techniques that were incorporated into making of this one are really a essential part of washoku, Japanese cuisine. Uh, one for rice and one for miso soup. There are many kinds of one. And from from chakai seki, uh, opening of uh, the lid of one is the starting point. Um, Kozuimono one, one for nimono, and one that comes with a lid. In making kai seki ryori, one is one important piece of what we offer to the guests. Uh, this is called a Gorokuan bowl. Uh, it uh, looks almost like a bowl for eating noodles in our daily life. Um, uh, this comes from Yanagida Mura village in Noto Peninsula. Uh, in a temple uh, 50, 60 years ago, uh, this uh, one has been kept and uh, uh, this uh, Goroku one is now uh, owned by this particular village. I mean, the trademark Goroku one is owned by the village. And at one time, a person named uh, Kado Isaburo found this uh, in one of a very interesting shape, discovered this one in a little village in Noto. Uh, and uh, he... Mm-hmm. It came to uh, learn how to do decoration on one uh, as an artist, and uh, what he made as an artist uh, are now found in the Metropolitan Art Museum. Uh, and uh, this one had been used in a temple, as I mentioned, and uh, about 800 years ago, uh, the people in the village were already using uh, this one of this particular shape. I don't know whether they were used such a one for their daily life or for a, uh, rituals in the shrines or temples, whether they were served in restaurants. Uh, one is truly essential for our life. And sometimes the one comes with a lid and certain, certainly a guest is allowed to open up the lid. This whole experience is a very interesting and unique and symbolic actions uh, when we eat and enjoy Japanese food. And we have a small counter and table in a restaurant. And when a guest uh, opened the lid, uh, I uh, pay a close attention to how uh, the guest opened the lid. Sometimes the guest is so clumsy in opening or holding one. But uh, no Japanese guests are able to so skillfully hold one and open the lid. And they are so beautiful in how they perform um, 
and the hold the one. I think the Japanese people now have to learn uh, from non-Japanese uh, guests regarding how to hold and open the lid. Now, here are a chopsticks. Suppose that this is stable, and you open the lid. And sometimes you do not know how to place a lid. This is the correct way of uh, uh, placing the lid. And this is for nimono. Uh, so first you taste a sip, a shiru, and then you take chopsticks, you take the chopsticks on the right hand side and you hold uh, the bowl with the left hand side. This is the appropriate way of holding uh, the one. And this is the way uh, you lift the chopsticks and uh, uh, place the chopsticks. And if you are able to perform this entire series of actions perfectly, perhaps you can impress the chef. All of these actions represent the beauty, and I think that has a lot to do with the shape and the beauty of the one itself. This little action of opening the lid, lifting the lid, is part of what makes one really beautiful and what makes Japanese culture uh, very profound and deeply aesthetic. Uh, well, one is a topic uh, which is really wide and deep, but I think uh, this talk uh, really has given me a chance to review one once again. And now we are here in Kyoto, but on uh, March the 14th this year, uh, Hokuriku Shinkansen bullet train begins its services connecting Kanazawa City to Tokyo. I sincerely hope that you will come and visit Kanazawa City and eat Kaga uh, Japanese cuisine and appreciate the beauty of lacquerware. And uh, I hope that that will be an opportunity for you to enjoy uh, Japanese cuisine and the laka ware that go with them in other parts of Japan. Now, I think that it's about time for me to begin to cook some dishes that are to be placed uh, nicely in one. It's hard for you to see, but he, uh, there are lots of uh, mother of pearl inlays as decoration. And actually, uh, those uh, mother of pearl inlays were once covered with another coat of lacquer, and then uh, that part uh, covering uh, the mother of inlays uh, were removed after a lacquerware was coated on them. Uh, they go through such a process in order to. Uh, clarify uh, that there is a, a mother of uh, uh, pearl inlays uh, and by taking off uh, the lacquer which covered uh, the mother of inlay, uh, you can feel uh, uh, that um, uh, the mother of inlay uh, part is not even with uh, the surface of uh, the lacquerware. Uh, today I would like to make one dish a clear soup of sesame tofu and hamaguri plum, and that is to be served in Megetsuwan. Uh, well, it's uh, silence here.
So I'm sorry that I cannot serve uh, any uh, dish. Uh, I hope that you can enjoy the dish with your eyes. And the clear soup contains sesame tofu and hamaguri clam and warabi bracken and kinome green leaf. And from mid February toward early spring, we offer this particular dish. The hamaguri clam is a symbolic uh, ingredient of early spring and the bracken. Uh, it begins to come into season, and when a guest open up the bowl, when they see these vegetables and clam, they really feel that the spring has come, and that's the joy of opening and lifting the lid in enjoying a course of Japanese cuisine. In January, uh, well, February begins from tomorrow, uh, but from uh, mid-January, uh, a new sake begins uh, to appear in the market, and Kanazawa, Ishikawa Prefecture, uh, is one of the main sake-producing areas, and uh, around the time when the new sake uh, is uh, ready, uh, uh, those uh, sake brewers uh, come and visit us with the new sake and also uh, sake leaves. Uh, sake leaves uh, are what we need when we make sake kasujiru uh, soup. Uh, in Kanazawa, when uh, weather is still cold, uh, uh, the uh, soup uh, containing uh, sake leaves really warms you up. The season for kasujiru sake soup is in January, but what should go with the soup? Of course, we have to choose food ingredients in its season. First of all, you think about the buri, yellow tail fish. It can be duck or crab. It can be daikon or radish or a turnip kabu. But if it's a sake, it's a soup, it has to be buri, yellow tail. I brought all the seasoning, including the miso from Kanazawa. First of all, I make a kind of miso soup which is not very thick, light miso soup. Then I add sake kasu sake leaves into the miso soup. I think this is the simplest way. Gensuke daikon is uh, the Kanazawa, uh, the variety of daikon uh, radish. It's shorter and uh, thicker in diameter. And in the case of buri daikon, uh, uh, the, the yellow tail uh, the simmered with uh, daikon radish, usually you are unhappy to see that the shape of the radish is gone. But if you use this particular type of daikon, uh, the shapes will be maintained. When the ingredients are cooked well enough, I add sake kasu, sake leaves into the soup. Some alcohol remains in the sake leaves. When I make it or when customers eat it, if the person is not uh, the strong against alcohol, uh, the, I see that the face of the person gets the reddish. It's okay because it warms the body up, but uh, we are worried if the person is going back by driving. A car. (laughs) 
Instead of choosing one with Makie decoration, I think I should choose a bow with more strength, and that's why I decided to use a gold oak one because the strength in this bow would go well with the, the kind of strength that the, the food has. Each household and each restaurant would have a different way of making of sake kasu. I add ichimi to garashi to give the hot spice onto the soup. And the third one is jibu ni. This is a cooking style well known in Kanazawa. People who know jibu ni as the uh, the cooking technique representative in only in Ishikawa, but in Edo era, it was also known in in uh, the Wakayama and also or Nagoya Owari area. This may be due to that the Maeda, the field road of Ishikawa, uh, used to be from Nagoya area. Perhaps the Jibuni existed other regions uh, in Edo, but today it's found only in Kanazawa. And uh, we often use a duck for Jibuni today, but originally the definition of Jibuni is as follows. Uh, shoyu soy sauce and the sugar is added to the dashi broth uh, to make the soup somewhat sweet and to make the soup sticky. Usually you would use kuzu starch, but in the case of jibuni, we use the wheat flour. The use of wheat flour is the unique character of jibuni cooking. Duck, you see that the I have sprinkled flour, and this is wheat flour, not other starch. I don't know why the komugiko wheat flour is used. Other than jibuni, even in Kanazawa, we don't use wheat flour. If you use kuzu starch, the the finished dish uh, is too clear and too light. And by using wheat flour, uh, the, the sticky uh, surface on the duck is somewhat uh, stronger, and uh, that goes better with the thing we call jibuti style. So some rural uh, the flavor is uh, what we need. Sudarefu is a gluten we use with gluten. It's as if uh, uh, the, uh, the, the groups on the surface of this food and uh, the surface is, is uneven because we hope that the sticky soup, uh, the seasoned with the soy sauce and the sugar, would stay on the surface of gluten. Uh, in the case of Kanazawa, if you want to buy it, you have to go to a vegetable shop. 
because other than that, you get all the you can get all the food ingredients, including food. Uh, if you go to the vegetable shop, if you go to uh, the special shop for uh, food uh, with gluten, you can buy it. But I also order sudare food from vegetable shops. In the case of uh, the the wild duck, where do I go to get it? I don't go to the meat shop. I go to fish shop, fish vendors. It's been like this. It's not my decision. Uh, the, in uh, the mid-November, uh, you can start using it because a ban is released. Sometimes I buy directly from hunters, but otherwise I go to the fish vendors to get wild duck. I know this is a symposium organized by uh, a public uh, organization, and if you are very much worried about the law, you may start wondering if it's okay for a fish vendor to sell uh, meat or duck. And uh, so I go to the fish shop. Uh, if you see uh, the bird, and uh, other uh, fish staying like a cod. I wonder why. During Edo period, people did not eat meat, bird meat. So when the, the ducks were hunted, there were no vendors who could sell them other than fish vendors who were already selling something hunted and provided fresh Well, actually, I don't like uh, this beater because it's too small. I am mixing uh, the flour with water. Please weaken the heat. This beater looks too small in my hand. I've never used it before. The beater looks like a toothpick. Now it's getting ready. I think you are familiar with the un, sticky sauce. And the color uh, is quite different from the sticky sauce made with kuzu starch. In the past, when the houses of the Japanese people were not airtight, or when the wind was coming in from everywhere, people needed this kind of sticky soup so that the, the temperature of the soup would remain high when it was moved from the kitchen uh, to the living room and uh, with the lid on the bowl. Uh, again, the warmness of the, the dish or meal uh, would have been well maintained. This is what I guess because the winter of Kanazawa uh, must have been very tough and uh, recently we've had a very cold winter and uh, please look at this. During the past five years or six years, I'm invited abroad, and I would use beef for jibuni, or when I go to Middle East, I may use ram instead of duck. But the way I prepare the dish 
can be modified. And the jibuni does not mean that I always have to use one. I may put uh, the, the ingredients on a flat dish like a Western style cuisine. But whenever I put it in one, I always realize that this must have been the starting point. It's quite important for us to feel the season. And uh, there are many keywords for you to understand. And I hope that uh, the three dishes uh, will give you some keyword for you to understand Japanese cuisine deeply. I hope that the, what I talked today uh, would make you think about uh, why people are using one bowl in Japan. Thank you very much.